What is modern slavery? Well, modern slavery is the exploitation of someone for gain at personal and commercial levels. Modern slavery exists in our everyday world, all around us. It exists in every country and it is estimated that there is 40 million people around the world living in modern slavery. 71% of this number are women and girls and one-fourth is children. There are many different types of modern slavery and the type of modern slavery that is existing in U.S. prisons is forced labor or when people are forced to work under threat of punishment. Prison labor is when incarcerated people work. Not all prison labor is forced labor, but it does become forced labor when there is a power imbalance and inmates can't question or change their conditions. There is a very fine line between voluntary labor in prisons and forced labor. This line can be defined by threat of punishment, use of force, and coercion towards inmates. Prisoners are a big part of the workforce in the U.S. About 870,000 inmates work. Out of the 1.4 million people that are in prisons in the U.S., 54% are in prisons with working programs. Prison labor started with the idea of teaching inmate job skills so reentry to society would be smoother. Most of the jobs that inmates are forced to do are to maintain the prison. Some of the jobs inside the prison can include cleaning the dishes, doing laundry, groundskeeping, and all-around maintenance. Some forced labor also provides goods and services to the market. This can include sewing clothes for big companies like Victoria's Secret, agriculture, making food for businesses like McDonald's and Starbucks, and fighting wildfires. Prisons save hundreds of millions of dollars making inmates work paying inmates from 20 to 31 cents an hour, which is about 45 times less of what the average wage for the job they are performing should be. The 13th Amendment of the United States Constitution states, Neither slavery nor voluntary servitude, except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States, or any place subject to their jurisdiction. This amendment abolished involuntary servitude and slavery. But, like Jacqueline Buss writes, many argue that the 13th Amendment did not abolish slavery. Slavery was merely reformed. Jobs in prisons and the treatment inmates receive are inhumane. In some cases, this is especially true. Some of the most extreme cases of forced labor in prison are in Texas and Florida, where inmates are forced to work in fields receiving no pay. Guards, armed with guns, watched over them on horseback. In the case of Adrian Drapal, prisoners were forced to work, cleaning in wastewater treatment pit, 15 yards tall and wide, full of black, toxic sludge. Adrian was 30 years old when he was sentenced seven years for a serious injury by vehicle. He is now at Carroll County Correctional Institute in Carroll County, Georgia. Adrian Drapal was put to work in horrendous conditions, being pushed to his limits. The city contractor who overviewed the work he was doing didn't even bother to learn the worker's name. It was just inmate. Adrian recalls this and says, My name, that's what it was, inmate. To her, I was two hands, two legs, and a non-deferred torso to be used at will. Sadly, this is the reality for many prisoners in the U.S. Guards degrade inmates, and some are also racist, calling inmates slurs and taking part of racial groups like the KKK. There is a racial bias in prison systems toward people of color, or POC. Most people incarcerated are POC, and prison laborers are mostly Latinos or African Americans. If prisoners disagree with guards or do not want to work, they are threatened or punished with solitary confinement or elongated sentences. In solitary confinement, prisoners spend more than 22 hours a day in a cell alone. This has been shown to not only gravely affect a person's mental health, but their physical health too. Inmates have tried protesting against the inhumane conditions they are being subjected to. In 2017, 24,000 prisoners from 12 different states timed a protest on the anniversary of the Attica prison uprising. Both protests, and all the protests that have taken place in between, have drawn attention to the abuse and modern slavery taking place in the U.S. prison system. Some protests quickly turned violent, especially when guards used force to try and stop the prisoners. Protests and strikes have had differing levels of success, and they bring light to the problems in prisons, but only if they are brought to the public's attention, which doesn't happen that often. Most don't lead to any immediate change, and even protests that started off peacefully can leave damage. But sometimes protests have had significant impacts, and they can lead people to address and change what is going on in the world around them.
There are many different groups that speak out about the modern slavery occurring in prisons around the world. For example, the International Labor Organization, or ILO, has a list of indicators that can help determine if work is free and voluntary in prisons. If the criteria on the list doesn't match what is happening in prison, it could be modern slavery. The indicators on the list include consent forms signed by the inmates, wages and hours that compare to workers outside of prison, and the standard health and safety measures. All of these factors must be present for the work done in prisons to be considered voluntary or free prison labor. Another group that discusses prison labor is the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, or UNODC. They outline the minimum standards on how incarcerated people should be treated in their Nelson Mandela rules. The Nelson Mandela rules says that inmates must be given the same standard human rights like wages, health, and safety as citizens outside of prison. Sadly, the protection of inmates and detainees from forced labor not only in the United States but around the world too is incredibly low. In the U.S., American labor laws, like the Fair Labor Standards Act, excludes incarcerated people and classifies the work they do as penal and not economic. We need to donate some of our time and money to help the people in prison fight the abuse they are receiving. Some of the things we can do is educate ourselves and others by reading and keeping ourselves updated on the topic. We can also collaborate or partner with organizations like Freedom United or call government officials. You can donate to prison reform organizations like the Marshall Project, FAMM, or the Prison Policy Initiative. These organizations not only have places to donate, but they also include stories and case studies you can read. Many organizations also have petitions to sign, which take minimal effort and you can also donate some money after signing. A good place with many petitions is change.org. Here you can find petitions for a specific person or the problem in general. Stopping our contribution to companies that have been proved to use forced prison labor is also another important thing that can be done to help. There are lists on both stores and businesses that use prison labor and those that make sure that their products are made ethically. Shopping ethically is not always economically possible, but if so, then just try to shop ethically whenever you can. Slavery in the U.S. prison system is a huge problem, and if we all join together, we can help stop it.